Hello, this is Bobster. Welcome back to episode 7 of Stonopolis. And I've got a different microphone because I frankly give up with mine. Um, it sounds like I'm under the ocean. So, first things first, we've had an update to the pack. And that's the first thing you'll notice here in the bottom corner is we now have backups. That's a new mod which was added in Stonopolis 2.0, I think this is on. So yeah, that's good. There are some other changes that I'll go over shortly. Uh, first of all, uh, these routing nodes. Now, if you remember last episode, they kept flashing on and off. Uh, and I just I just put it down to a visual glitch. Well, it is a visual glitch, but I also found that these nodes disconnected on world to reload so that they wouldn't actually load up connected and I had to manually connect them up each time. Now there wasn't three like there is here now. Uh, there was one in the middle here and that one stretched across to it and then the, that one stretched across to that one. I've added another node in so it's broken the path up. Now you can still see there it flashes on and off but this is now working. It stays connected on world load so if you do have that problem just add in an extra relay uh, well, just a routing node, they're not called relays. Uh, and that should fix that actual problem. So let's talk about what the update added. Uh, two things to the catalogue. Because somebody requested them, even though you can get them anyway. Carrots have been added and potatoes have been added. And what did I do off camera? Well, apart from fix the routing network, I added that third water wheel that uh, we talked about. So I made some more creosote and uh, added the third water wheel, so that's now running on three. As suspected, at the end of last, last episode, uh, this furnace is not keeping up, as you can see here. There's absolutely loads of copper to smelt. So that's the first thing we're going to do before we crack on with the quests, is to open all this area up. Now I'm going to open it all up. I'm going to leave this wall present this one and but I'm going to open all of that up and we're going to put our immersive engineering machines in there so that's the first thing I'm going to do here is just go along here and double tap oh I didn't mean to do that um, let's just put that back after we've eaten. So if you're new to this and you're watching the pack from a, a jump in, you just hover over and press the letter K on your keyboard and it turns all the pebbles into stone blocks. And what she'll do is just put a block back there and that will remove that. Okay, well that node is, the nodes are breakable underwater. That's interesting to know. So a bit like torches, they do actually break. Uh, I'm not worried about that because we're going to replace that one anyway. We'll put all that stone away and then I'm going to raise the roof up a couple as well. Uh, just get some, grab some torches. Okay, so at a later date I might knock this up too as well. Uh, the, the plan here is to build our furnace array in that in that corner over there. And then we're going to have our first immersive engineering machines along here. And then should the need arise, I will push that wall back. And we will have a row of immersive engineering machines on that row as well. Right, so what we're going to need for our array. We're going to need... Um, I'm going to do four furnaces for the moment. Uh, and we're going to copy exactly what we've got in here. So I'm going to do this. So one output routing node for the fuel connected to four furnaces and one output routing node connected to four hoppers which puts the uh, produce that you're going to fuel and then four hoppers into a container for the input routing node. So I'm going to copy that exactly how we've got there. So this is nothing new. If you saw me make that in a previous episode then that's exactly what we're going to do here. What I am going to need however is some hoppers. Now we have a new recipe for hoppers um, that was added in this latest update. 
So yes, this hopper recipe. So we've got this is a new recipe. Uh, previously, we had to make the chest and use wood. Now you can use actual wooden logs. So if I just did that, you'll see there we've got now 12 wooden hoppers. And that's not far off what we're going to need. So I'm going to remove this hopper here so as to break this chain. I'll leave that furnace going. There is a node underneath it, which is a... That might not be connected now, actually, because I know it is connected. Uh, that's connected to that, which is connected to that. So this should all still be working. Uh, the one I broke was on the back of this furnace, uh, which puts the fuel in there, which, as you can see, it's running out. So anyway, um, you have to remove that. So you place your first furnace down, and against that you want an output routing node. And then you place the other three furnaces side on, so they're all facing the side. I think you could use the fronts, but I'm not going to, and I'm just going to keep it uniform, like so. Now we need a block to stand on. And what I'm going to do here is connect this routing node here um, to this one, because this one is staying. This one is not staying. I'm going to remove that once it's... Um, in fact, that's probably run out anyway, so I'll, I'll remove that now. And this. So that should give us back. Those need another trapdoor for that. I might actually just um, make a like a dummy wall here. Just to finish that off. That works for me. Right, so this routing node is connected, and what we want to do with this is input the fuel into the furnaces. Now we need four of these, and you see that one's already set up for it. Um, so we need another three. And you can pull from JEI. We're going to pull this void chunk into here. And then for each one of the furnaces, we're going to make sure that we have the void chunk selected filter. And they should now be filling up with fuel. They're not. Are we disconnected somewhere? I used the wrong node. No, I used the right node. So is that node connected or not it's hard to tell i wish there was an easier way i don't think it is there's nothing going from that one so we'll connect that to this one and then see whether they fill up with fuel near yes that one did so why oh there we go so that node wasn't actually connected to the rest of the network. It must have been connected downwards to the uh, one behind the furnace, and then the furnace one connected. Right, okay, so they've all got now got fuel. So what we're going to do is place another output routing node directly on top of that one. So it places it there. And then we take four of our wooden hoppers and place them pointing in towards the furnaces now this is going to be our produce which is the output of the strainer this is a new filter and we want four of them again and we're going to input copper dust now we didn't have a filter for this because it hoppered in if you remember hoppered directly from the strainer into the furnace so we never had the filters for this so each one of these input copper dust and they should go straight in oh once we link the uh, node up to this node you can link them to any node by the way i think this one here seems to be filling up first and uh, Oh, it won't work because we've got no oh, we've got no input into the network on the on the uh, strainer itself. 
So that one on the back is an output routing node. So that's actually putting in the void copper ingots from here. So we need to input these into the network. And that's where one of our input routing nodes comes in. We'll connect that up to that because why not? doesn't really matter. And for this one, we want to input the copper dust. So that's inputting the copper dust into the network. And now, as you can see there, that's actually going into the furnaces. Now I'm going to cheat and I'm going to get rid of the copper dust that is in my inventory. It's not really cheating. I'm just going to get rid of the copper dust that's in my inventory. Okay, so these hoppers will fill up. Um, and then they will trickle feed into the furnaces, no problem. So all we've got to deal with now is the output. And for that, we're going to take our hoppers and I need a chest. And place the chest in the middle and then we can hopper in from each side. And then what's happening here is the copper ingots should be going into this chest. And then all we've got to do is get this back on the node network. And for that, we need another input routing node. And then in here, we want to input the copper ingots. And once we link this up, the copper ingots from here should disappear and they will be going all the way along here and into our drawer. So if you look at the top of the screen there, you can see the counts going up. Okay, and in the update, this was fixed. Um, in the last episode, when we put our copper in here, there was no nuggets option. This is a fix in the updates. We now have nuggets as well. So hopefully this will be able to cope better. <laughs> and tidy up a little bit. I don't like the fact that these are sticking out all over the place, but you've only got so many sides that you can put stuff in. Um, let's just keep an eye on our meshes. Yeah, that one's gone. I did make some iron meshes and put them in a, uh, a drawer just here for quick and easy access. Right, so that's waiting for this. This one, yeah, it's pretty damaged, but that's that's that. So, okay, so hopefully this will cope better. Uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't and if we need to expand it we can we can add another set of four or go back through the wall that way or just keep going behind or even go up it doesn't really matter uh, we'll, we'll expand it as we need to to cope with all the different ores as we automate them all and of course there's a backlog of copper for it to catch up on so once that backlog's caught up on it, it might be okay as it is right then so it's questing time let's see where we are with the quests We've pretty much covered uh, Molten Friends. Uh, as you can see, it's turned green, so that means complete, even though we've got one here that's not been done, and that's because that is an optional quest. So we can get cracking now with massive machines. We're going to make the immersive engineering uh, metal press to start with, get that powered up, and that will give us access to gears, which will open up other immersive engineering machines so let's start with the redstone engineering block uh, that's pretty straightforward just need some resources that makes four so that could be useful there's not i don't think there's any machine that uses more than one redstone engineering block on on, on a machine uh, not that comes to mind that i can think of so that's that one we need a heavy not a light I did pre-make some, where are they, these, the steel mechanical components. I think we're going to need the plates as well. Uh, what else we're going to need? The hammer, um, LV wire stuff. Anyway, let's crack on. So heavy engineering block, as you can see, it's got four of these mechanical components in there. We've also got four sheet metal, so that's where the plates come in. This also makes four. Uh, we do need a lapis stone nugget. So that's that one. 
we've got a normal piston so it's a steel rod not a stone rod i think i've got some of those somewhere as well and i will need some steel scaffolding and it's this recipe down here so three steel ingots three steel rods and i better don't have three steel rods anymore no nope. So we have to strain a steel ingot with an iron mesh. Of course, we'll use our everlasting input upgrades. And we get four steel rods for the price of one ingot. I'm back after a short break and a bit of tinkering with the microphone. I hope this is slightly better. Go back to the machines when we're making the steel scaffolding. And that's this recipe at the bottom. And lastly, we need the conveyor belt. And for this, we need steel nuggets, iron ingots, and redstone. Right, and we're all set to put our first immersive engineering multi-block down and that will be the metal press and we're going to place it down right on this end here starting just here and we're going to leave that side for automating the ore processing which the metal press is not part of and the way to assemble this is redstone engineering block at the bottom with conveyor belts at both sides redstone engineering block and if you crouch push right up it should orientate in the right direction and then we need our conveyor belts and i'm going to have this side as the input so the belt needs to go that way and then this side will be the output and then with the engineer's hammer you just right click i believe it's on the piston which is correct uh, i think this roof's going to have to go up i think this roof is going to have to go up yeah that's a uh, much better height much better so let's bring this relay out um, actually, we could take it from that one, which would probably be better. As long as this is not in the way, which it may well be. Can I reach that from here? Yeah, adjust. Oh, no, it's not. Just not in the way. Yeah, I'm going to string the relays all the way down there. That, uh, that works for me. So on top of here, we need... A LV wire connector and we just simply connect those two together and that powers the metal press. Now the metal press needs these metal press mold plates to function. We've already made the um, plate one as you can see but we need to make the others. Let's just collect that and then we'll put those in there. So to get the bronze gear, you need to make the metal press mould. And to make the metal press mould, you need the engineer's blueprint that makes the moulds. As you can see there, wire unpacking rod, packing gear and bullet casing. So this is a different blueprint to the one that we've already made in here. This one is crafting components. Metal press moulds. So the only thing we need here that's different from the other one that we made is the iron plate at the top here. So let me just quickly do this. So to make sand, simply dry dirt twice. First time it makes the um, coarse dirt and then dry it again for the sandy dirt. And then you strain it. Right, so you only got one and there should be a draw in there. Yeah, I thought I'd done all this once, so 
do it again. And all the way down here, that against there, sand and the sugar cane in. And that's now growing. We'll just wait for one. So we can make our paper. So we've got three paper, three die, and that iron plate makes the engineer's blueprint for metal mold. And we just swap change, and then for the gear one, it's three steel plate and the engineer's wire cutters, which we've already made. In here. So that's that one. At the same time, we'll make the rod and the wire. And then I'm going to make a chest. And we're going to change, place this chest at the end of the conveyor. So this is the output chest. And then what we'll do is we'll use that to store the moulds as well. So we can swap and change from there as we need. Eventually what we'll do is we'll have a metal press for each one of those moulds when we get to applied energetics for automation purposes. Right, so it wants us to make a bronze gear and an iron gear. I don't know if I've got any bronze. Oh, I do. Just enough. Now we're going to need a lot of bronze for this next part when we get onto some of the other bits. So we'll just grab the gear mould, right click, and that swaps with the plate mould. And then what we could do with here is I don't know if these hoppers are actually going to let all four through. They're actually going to let none through. Okay, that's interesting. Now, if we had a conveyor on another space further in, it would drop all the items in the hopper on that. So we'll do that now. Um, still got the belts on me. So that's going the right direction. And if you shift right click and then we can throw those in there like that. Oops, I picked that up. That works. You have to be careful using hoppers as input because if there's a problem like you lose power, it will drop all the items onto this belt and they will eventually despawn. Just box that back up. We could put a chest on top, but I think the hopper's okay for now. So there's the iron and bronze gear that we needed. I'm going to put the plate press back in, that plate mould. And then we'll collect our... Oh, there's no nothing to collect. There are actually no rewards. So the next thing we've got here is a blazing fluid bucket. So this requires a mixer. Uh, a mixer is a huge, or quite large, multi-block machine from Immersive Engineering. Um, it's in the heavy machinery section, and uh, the mixer here. So we've got to make all this. And uh, if you hover over the question mark there, you will see there's a list of blocks required for this build. And you'll also notice that if I pause this and expand, there is one block there which is highlighted red. That is a block that you right click with the hammer to form the multi block structure. So I'm going to make all these. Now they're all pretty straightforward. We've just made most of them. Uh, and then I shall come back after all blocks have been made. So as a little experiment, instead of making the plates on the metal press, I thought let's have another go at straining them with this input everlasting upgrade, everlasting input upgrade. Now I've got 36, I think it was, steel plates, or somewhere around that mark, uh, from one steel block, and it looks like we're heading into that sort of territory again. So, I mean, this is only nine iron, and I could take that out now, keep the nine iron, and take all the plates out. Um, but I'm interested to see how far this will go. Oh, wow. So, 78 metal plates from nine iron ingots. Now, 
Of course, it's open to RNG. So this is this is only an 80% chance. So it could pop off to the first one and you'll actually lose out. But yeah, who needs metal presses for plates? <laughs> right, we have all the blocks required. And uh, let's see, let's leave a gap for more metal presses. And this structure has an input at the back, uh, but you can get to it from the side. So I can put this right up against the wall. Let's do that. So we want that pattern, three across, two down, three pipes and a light engineering block. So all these blocks in our inventory. So yeah, round about here, it'll do fine. Three pipes. On that engineering block and for the next level we've got our redstone block two light engineering and the four That's, whoops two light engineering those and then that redstone engineering block And if we go up another level, we've just got another light engineering block and a steel fence. Here somewhere. And then, like I said to you before, it's the block which is slightly shaded as red. Which you right click with the hammer. And there we have our mixer so power is this one here i think i'm gonna have to bring it across i mean it will reach from there no problem it's it's the wire if i put more metal presses here then that wire is not going to reach so let's come across to here and then we'll go from there to here that works and that wire is not in the way then you're not going to rub ourselves on it so we can now make wires this way so this is one copper ingot uh, to two copper wires whereas before we were using oh that makes four i think i've got copper on me i do And we just need a stick. And then we can hook that relay to that. And again, that node's not in the way, and that should be getting power. How's our power doing? And obviously, it's dropped a little bit, but you can see there it's still going back up. That's fine. Right, let me clear my inventory a little bit and we'll get on to making this fluid which is required. Let's have another chest here and we're just going to put immersive engineering parts in there. As in the component parts, not actual, you know, fences and stuff. Uh, I suppose they're classed as component parts. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll just put, that's our immersive engineering chest. We'll just put everything immersive engineering in there, including the manual. Right, so what fluid were we making? This is blaze blazing fluid. Made inside the mixer, it can be collected from a barrel when the fluid is removed from the mixer. So the clue there of storing a liquid is in the word barrel. Now these aren't the barrels, the wooden ones. Uh, immersive engineering has their own metal barrels. And these are just iron sheet metal. So that will suffice as our output barrel. And we can book it straight from it. So that's the output. Um, the input needs switching on this. In fact, let's see whether it does. I think the mix will auto push out. So 
let's have a look. And what are we going to need for a blazing fluid bucket? Or bla blazing fluid, blaze powder and lava. Uh, don't know if we have any of those lava things left. Oh, we do. We have eight. Um, need buckets. Got those on me. And I've only got two blaze powder. So how much did that make? I need four blaze powder. So we'll just take one of these and convert them into two. That's enough for a bucket of blazing fluid. Now these things, you could place them in the world and bucket them up. Or you could simply just... Oh, no, you can't right-click them on the barrel. <laughs> okay. Um, we need a barrel for the input side as well. A fluid input. Unless it automatically pulls in from the barrel. Let's have a look. It does not. So this is where our flopper comes in. So we need three iron mechanical components in the bucket. Make another bucket, seems it's going to get used up. Now this should work. That has completed the chapter that we previously didn't make the flopper for. Uh, let's see if this actually works or not. Yep, that actually works. So if you want a quick and easy way of getting the fluid into the mixer. As you can see there does not automatically output into this metal barrel. Now, I don't know if it's going to automatically output into a flopper. Let's just grab this. And point it straight down. Yep, it, it automatically pushes into a flopper. So we just... Whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't expect it to put it into the world. <laughs> um, so blue is input. So that's fine there. Um, yeah. So that will now automatically input into the barrel. Can we get to that barrel? Yeah. This hitbox is nice and tight. Look, so we can get to the barrel. And that is one a bucket of blazing fluid. Uh, let's make another flopper quickly. And we'll just put that there like that. So that's kind of semi-automated. So flopper in for input and then use the flopper for output. Let's just check on our power, make sure we're doing okay. Yep, that's full. Now, how much of this are we going to need? Let's just make another one. get them that way right oh the lava went straight through okay that's probably not a good idea then in that case to have that flopper I'm not sure if there's any way of filtering that actually I thought there was a a way to specify To continually have to break that. Oh no, what's happened there? We've got half the lava in. Oh dear, dear, dear. What a mess. See the other one. Where did the other one go? down there.
media. All right, so don't forget to remove this flopper from here, otherwise the lava will go straight through and come out into this, which has just happened to me. I'm not going to show you because it was embarrassing. Also, wait for this to convert fully. Um, that actually is wrong. Uh, can I rotate that? Please say yes. That will do so I can pick it up. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, the flopper thing doesn't quite work for output. Right, and what do we do with blazing buckets? Read the quest. Magma cubes can be summoned using blazing fluid. It would be the last thing on the list, wouldn't it? So you only need one bucket of blazing fluid, not two. Uh, I'm not sure if it has any use later on. And you need some blaze powder to summon a magma cube. I suppose we've got a spare bucket. Should we need one? Uh, looks like we can use it in strainers. Yeah, so we're going to need an extra bucket anyway for the strainers. So, yeah, I knew that. That's why I made two buckets. Honest. Did. But we can summon the lava monsters to get blaze powder, and then we can swap out the liquid. If we actually get any. Well, that was nice. Five. Right, so we got 16 uh, blaze powder from those. Um, just need another bucket. And we need somewhere to store this lava that's not going to burn anything. Uh, we'll put said lava in there. there. And then we replace the lava with the blazing fluid. And now, using the blaze powder, we can summon magma cubes. Now, these are probably going to be small ones. Um, yeah. And we'll, we'll keep a tally on how many magma cream we get. Right, that worked out pretty good actually, and they all dropped one. That's the magma cream. And we strain the magma cream to create slime balls. And this is in purified water with 100% output. So let's see how many we get. There's our everlasting input upgrade. And we'll keep some. Not quite sure how many slime balls we're going to need. Uh, if it's just for the tree, then we need four. Because we need, if we ever need sticky pistons, then we're going to need some more, unless there's an alternative recipe. A hundred percent outcome. We're guaranteed to get another one. So we'll let those run. Grab a sapling. And that's the lime coloured sapling. Now, as you can see down here, if we strain the leaves, we've got a chance at uranium. That's not unlocked just yet. So we need to grow this tree, get some saplings, and get some leaves. You know, do the usual thing. Now, uh, need our grower. Not, not used that in a while. It's not the grower. That's the grower. Change this back to shapeless. Oh, 
I think that's plenty enough slime balls. We'll have a magma cream back for a rainy day. As you can see there, we've got plenty of leaf blocks. Pop the wood in there. And this was strained, I believe, using water. Yeah, so it's water. And it's only a 60% chance. Uh, but actually, I think I've got a upgrade in, haven't I? Yeah, well, there. So, in fact, we'll utilise both of these. We'll swap that out. Put that in. I'm sure I took the upgrade out. Did not take the upgrade out? Oh, it's there in my inventory. Really sod. So we'll leave those straining and have a quick tidy up of our inventory. And that is that chapter complete. So we can collect these two rewards at the bottom. And then that uh, we'll collect the flopper one, which completed that chapter as well. And then we are on to Netherrag which is in the middle here. And as you can see, that other blazing fluid is also needed. And all you do is you strain down. And there's only a 20% chance, uh, which is a good job. We have an absolute load of stone. So I'm going to let these run through. And we'll leave it there, and I'll do the uh, a bunch of netherrack for the next episode. So in this episode, we've we'll put our furnace system up, which we'll just go and have a look at and make sure everything's still hunky-dory with this. As you can see, they're not working. They've processed all the copper. That's run out of a, a strainer. Um, Auto crafting strainers uh, we can actually do as long as we can make all the components for the automated work. Well, it's not the automated workbench that is that equivalent. It's the other machine. Um, the so in the book, we go back. Still under the machinery. So you have the assembler and you have the automated workbench. So this automated workbench is the automated version of this. So it'll be useful for making the void iron ingots. We'll need to get to that and also the lapis stone alloys. So we'll get around to making that in the next episode. Uh, but the assembler is what we need for doing automated crafting. And we'll use that for the meshes. So we will get the automated iron up first using the automated workbench and then we can begin crafting automated uh, mesh iron meshes the only thing i'm not so sure about at the moment is whether we can restrict how much iron goes to this assembler to make the meshes um because if we can't then it's gonna have to be manually fed iron um but as you can see that's all caught up um oh that's Got loads to do. We need another mesh in there. The, so meshes are still our problem. And we're going to need to make sure we upgrade this storage as well. This needs upgrading. I don't know if I did that or not. Oops. Do it without a book. No, didn't. Um, I did make some copper upgrades. But I think, again, that was in the episode I recorded that I then scrapped. And I think I made it for that. Um, the, the upgrade for the functional storage is, is basically a load of copper. It's this one here. So copper upgrade first. From copper you go to gold. So we can't make that yet. But we can make the copper one. And it's not difficult. It's not a difficult recipe at all. Uh, and that multiplies the block item by eight. So it's quite a big storage. It's, you know, it's not a basic one. So we'll utilize that. We've got the metal press made, but then we've come to the conclusion that our plates are better made in the strainers with the upgrades that we're using. Uh, we made the mixer, 
And that's about all we have done in this episode. I'll strip out this wall. And we've completed the Molten Friends and the Massive Machines quest line. And then we'll get on to Netherrack later on. Uh, I'm not sure why we've made uranium at the minute. I think it will become abundantly clear later on. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will catch you next time. So stay safe.